In this tips and tricks video, we'll be looking at how to model natural convection in ANSYS Discovery. In this example, we have a heat sink sitting on top of some component. So to start off, I need to create the enclosure of the fluid that we're going to use to model the natural convection. To do that, in the prepare tab, there's this volume en enclosure option. And then I select the body that I want it to enclose. And then by default, based off the dimensions, it's going to have a default cushion of 25% on each side. I'm going to modify this to be zero on the bottom, and then we'll do 75 on the top. Then I hit the check mark to create my enclosure. And now that my enclosure is created, we are ready to go ahead and set up the analysis. If I flip over to the simulation tab, I can you know, create all of my required inputs for the analysis. Um, so you'll notice first off we have um, our material assignments. Currently the chip is silicon and everything else is aluminum and that's not correct. We want to use air for this enclosure. So I'm going to select that. Now I want to define the heat flow on the chip. So under solid thermal, I'm going to do heat. And I'm just going to select the whole body here and use 10 watts. All right, so now my heat load is specified. Now I need to define my fluid region here. Um, so for natural convection, you know, there's we don't have a you know an inlet or outlet like you would traditionally have on a fluid flow problem. So what we're going to do is on one of the surfaces, we are going to define a flow condition, and this is going to be your inlet, and we're going to define it in terms of pressure with a value of zero um, psi and ambient room temperature. For all of my other faces, I'm also going to create a flow condition, but these will be my outlet faces. And the pressure there is going to be zero as well. So that's all I have to do in order to simulate this natural convection. You'll notice I have a fluid solid interface for the heat sink. Um, so everything else is set up. One other setting that needs to be changed is we need to include buoyancy effects in our fluid simulation. To access that, it's on these um, settings. Then under physics, there's this gravity defaults. We want to check off include buoyancy and the Direction of gravity is also specified here. This is the default, although that is something that you can change in your analysis. So as long as include buoyancy is checked off, we will include the effects of natural convection. So now everything's ready to solve, uh, set up and solve. The one other thing we should check is we can check our size preview to make sure that we have a, you know, fine enough resolution to be able to you know, accurately capture the fluid flow. And you'll see that that size is, you know, close to the thickness of these fins. So, you know, I already have my fidelity bumped up all the way, but we may need to include, you know, a fidelity control in order to properly be able to, um, you know, capture that fluid flow. So now that everything is set up and ready to solve, I can hit the solve button. And this will take, you know, a little bit to solve, a few seconds, and we'll cut back to this video whenever it's done solving. Now that the model is done solving, we can take a look at the results. And you can see, based off the temperature plot here, that we have a plume of hot air rising up from the heat sink, which is what we would expect from this type of analysis. And we can further interrogate the results and look at things like our direction field to see that plume or also, you know, the particle flow as well. This concludes 
this tips and tricks video on natural convection and ANSYS discovery. Thank you for watching.